Well, we've got uh, a couple of guests coming your way back to back here. We always love guests. All guests coming to you via the Fire Wings hotline. Try one of their delicious flavors of wings today. Fire Wings. Just wing it. Time to talk some fantasy football with our guy, Dave Richard from CBS Sports. CBSSports.com. You can see him all over the place. Dave, welcome in to The Drive. How are you? Gentlemen, how are you both? I hope you uh, stayed away from Mike Evans in your fantasy leagues yesterday. That was that was expected, actually. If you look at my rankings, I, I liked Godwin better. But uh, I did not see Peyton Barber having the monster breakout game that uh, that he ended up having. And my condolences if you have Cam Newton on your fantasy team. Uh, well, I'll say this to start things out, Dave. I do have Mike Evans, and he's a hard one to sit when you draft him that high. But I, I played him. Mm. Boo. Dave, your thoughts? On uh, on Evans? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I played him. him. I, I screwed up. Look, I, I didn't like the track record of him against Carolina. I thought the Panthers secondary played pretty well last week against the Rams. They held all three of those receivers to under 80 yards. And I, I just I, I wasn't a buyer of Jameis as a passer based on week one. I think he got better in, uh, in, in this game. Certainly in the second half, I think he definitely got a little bit better. And there's reason for optimism. If you've got Evans on your team, and it sounds like you do, I think you just you, you hold steady. Next week, he's got a good matchup against the Giants. I think he can take advantage of that matchup. And then there's going to be plenty of games down the line where Tampa Bay is not at home. They're on the road. Uh, they've got like two months straight on the road. They're going to be chasing points, and Evans should be able to come down with some numbers. He almost did uh, last night. So if you've got Evans, hang on to him. But if you don't have Evans and you want to improve a wide receiver, you can reach out to the guy that has Evans in your fantasy league. And, you know, put your arm around him and say, dude, I know you hate him. I know he's driving you crazy. I'm going to be your best pal. I'm going to offer you Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and Peyton Barber. Look what Peyton Barber just said. I'm going to give you both of these amazing guys from Mike Evans right now. What do you say? And maybe they say yes to that because they're tired of looking at Mike Evans' face on their roster. You want to have Mike Evans on your team. You just didn't want to start him yesterday. Dave Richard joining us. Dave Richard at CBS Sports and at CBS Sports HQ. Of course, Dave on Twitter as well, at Dave Richard. And we'll talk to him later about where you can hear, read, and see all of his fun and awesome advice. Except, you know, we've been we've been together years and years, Dave, and, and I like to think that we're friends. And uh, we're, uh, friends are always honest with each other. So I, I got to point this out. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm not trying to embarrass you. But I'm really shocked that in all the previews you did with us and all the previews I read, and I read everything you do, where were you on Darren Waller? I mean, last <laughs> seven catches, seventy yards last week. I mean, you couldn't even couldn't even mention him once. You know, it, it's almost like there was a, a mental block, and I didn't even know who he, who he was. But you, all right. Truth be told, Dave, you know this, and yep. we talked about it before. We talked about it last yes, week. Yes, we I did. How how I just I love finding those guys that. When, when, you, when you go into your draft and you name, okay, I'm going to take this guy that I heard this fantasy dude talk about, and the other people in the draft go, who? Right. <laughs> and then that player ends up being one of the studs that you pick up off waivers in week one. It just, it, it melts. it's like a sunset. It melts <laughs> my heart. It, just, it makes me just want to just sit and stare and, and smile. Right. It's really incredible. So, uh, yeah, to people who, who listen like and, and put up Darren Waller on their bench, You've got yourself a nice tight end, and maybe even a starting tight end if you had Hunter Henry. If you have O.J. Howard, I don't know how you can trust him moving forward. Um, yeah, pretty good. Hawkinson was another guy we talked about a lot, but I settled on Waller. Uh, shame on me for not settling on Hawkinson. Hmm. Yeah, we're joking, obviously, because now that that was that was Dave Richards' big sleeper pick to the point where he even had Darren Waller's name in his in his Twitter handle. And, and I want to segue out of that by saying, okay, I noticed your handle has changed because I went back to reference that before I was going to ask you the question. And I don't understand this one. I'm assuming it has to do with fantasy football, but it says hashtag hard man available is 58% of CBS leagues. And I know you had to do some abbreviations there, but I, I would you mind explaining that one off? Yeah, and now I'm going back to see if I made a typo in you, there or something. You like did. That. That's Maybe okay. I, I'm helping you out. You, you put is instead. Yeah, I of sure in. did make a typo. No, <laughs> no one told me except I'm for you. I'm you. Change it right now, live on the air. <laughs> uh, yeah, McCole Hardman is going to replace Tyreek Hill as that speedy receiver in Kansas City, and he played a lot last week. He didn't get any targets. I think 
I think the Chiefs were kind of preparing him to move forward because they knew that something was up with Tyreek Hill. And I'd like to think that he's a good stash right now. So just because we're done with draft season doesn't mean that I can't tout some, some stash guys for your fantasy squad. And he's still out there, like you can see, in over, well over 50% of CBS Sports Leagues. Go get yourself some McCole Hardman, put him on your bench, see what happens. He could even be a good number four receiver for you if you're really thin at the position for whatever reason in week two. Dave, what do you tell people? Because, you know, Dave and I come in here on Monday after the weekend and there's overreactions to how actual teams play. But now when you get to fantasy and individuals, guys will have a good week one. What are, what are some of the things that you saw this week that you say, no, that that should hold up or the other or conversely, you go, nah, that was just a week one kind of outlier. So I'm kind of nervous about John Ross because he, he had these monster numbers and everybody raced to pick him up off the waiver wire. But 55 yards came on a deep ball that almost was intercepted. Uh, 31 yards and a touchdown came on a flea flicker play. He does this every year too, Dave. Doesn't he have like the game and we all go pick him up and then he sucks or gets hurt? Well, if it's not John Ross who does it, it's somebody else who does it. But the one thing that I, 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 this one I have to give credit to my colleague Jamie Eisenberg on. Six of eight games that John Ross has played without A.J. Green, he's found the end zone. Mm. So take that for what it's worth. He's, he's, he's had the chance to, to score and, and put up some numbers without A.J. Green on the field. But what I noticed when I went back and I watched the game was that they were using him kind of like how the Rams used Robert Woods. And I bring that up because Zach Taylor, who's the play caller for the Bengals, used to coach in L.A. for two years. He was with that offense. And I think he sees traits in John Ross. Basically, it's the speed that he wants to try and get him out in space. So screen passes, out routes, things like that, along with the deep ball, that's how you're going to see them use John Ross. I don't know if he can if he can be great on a consistent basis. I think he can be okay as far as number three receivers go. Um, I, I think that he'll be all right. And then you compare that to what's going on in Baltimore, and you saw the Ravens just absolutely run roughshod over the Dolphins. Five touchdowns on 20 pass attempts for Lamar Jackson. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to have a game like that again in the rest of his career. The Dolphins' defense is just so bad, they can't put pressure on anybody. Brady might have six touchdowns this week. He's going to be so good. Um, so I, I think that Jackson can continue to put up numbers. He's got a great early season schedule, maybe even a good schedule the rest of the way. If he can stay healthy, I think he can be all right. And another receiver that had a big game, Marquise Hollywood Brown, yep. only played 14 snaps. I, I like the concept of him in this offense. I don't know if I'm racing to put him in lineups. I like the idea of having him on my bench ahead of Ross, A, because I just think that the way that the Ravens will use him could be as good, if not better, than how the Bengals use Ross. And then B and C, we've been let down by Ross before, and A.J. Green's going to come back, and that's absolutely going to hurt the target share for John Ross. Dave Richard with us. I was waiting to see. You mentioned so many players. You mentioned a couple receivers. Dave, I don't know if this guy's the most frustrating play, uh, fantasy player over the last five years, four years, but for me personally, he's probably been the most frustrating because I draft him damn near every year. I feel like he's been in the league 20 years, but I think he's only 24 years old, 25 years old. And I am completely at odds with whether or not to trust this guy. I'm talking about Sammy Watkins. I knew it. Man, I knew every, it. you know that every year we've been burned by this dude so many times. I have him in my starting lineup this weekend against Oakland, but I, I feel like we're looking at three catches for uh, 36 yards. I, uh, what do you do with him? You have to play him? Well, you got to think about him as the new number one receiver with Tyreek Hill out, and last week should make you feel real confident about his potential to break through in that offense. And remember, a lot of what Kansas City does predicated on misdirection and, and, and just deep throws, and those are ways that Sammy Watkins ended up having great numbers last week, and I think they can continue it again. And that's why I think it's important that Hardman is going to play on the field for Kansas City because he's such a speed threat that defenses can't just throw all their defensive coverage on Sammy Watkins' way. They'll get destroyed by Hardman. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe that's what the Raiders are going to do on Sunday, but they will not win. Now, look, they're not going to win anyway, but they're not even going to be able to keep it close if that ends up happening. Yeah, I think Sammy Watkins, as long as he's healthy and as long as he's that number one guy for Kansas City, you have to trust him. He's got a great quarterback throwing to him. Think about the quarterbacks that he's had in the past. Certainly in Buffalo, you can't like any of those guys. Sure. And then when he had Jared Goff uh, for the one year in L.A., he was a red zone threat for them. Now he's proven to be a little bit more than that. This was his career game for him. I don't think he'll be that good, but can you pencil him in for maybe 90 yards and a touchdown? I think you can this week against Oakland. And just looking at Kansas City's schedule over the next, I don't know, two months of the season, I don't know if there's a team out there that can slow him down. 
Dave, what do you do this week specifically and going forward? Where what do you expect from Antonio Brown as a Patriot? That's that's a real tough question to answer because I just don't know what will happen next. And I, I bet the Patriots are worried that they don't know what's going to happen next, and that's why they can't really plan anything more than just day by day with him, which is what Belichick says. And Belichick says that about everybody and everything. They just go one day at a time. And, uh, and I think that that's what we're going to see. There's a report out this morning that says that the NFL really isn't going to do anything to take Antonio Brown off the field on Sunday. If the Patriots feel comfortable using him, you are going to see him play against Miami. And that's a matchup that I think fantasy managers would like to take advantage of because the Dolphins, again, they're not going to be able to put pressure on Tom Brady. It's going to be a great opportunity for Brady to try and start building some rhythm and timing down with Antonio Brown. I think you've got to start him if you've got him, and then you just continue to take it week by week. And if by some chance somebody in your league comes to you with a trade offer and it just knocks your socks off, yeah, you jump off the Antonio Brown bandwagon because at this point you don't know what this lawsuit is going to do as far as his ability to play, and you don't know what else could end up happening or what decisions the Patriots make that take Antonio Brown off the field. Well, and that's perfect timing then. Let's take our first question from a listener. Uh, This is from David in... Carmichael, he says he has Cooper <laughs> Cup and Calvin Ridley. So if you have Antonio Brown on the bench, do you put him in for one of those guys? And if so, who? You could put him in for Cooper Cup. I think that there's just enough upside there to where you, you can feel better about Antonio Brown. Cup is probably safer. And the other factor is that you're going to have to wake up early on Sunday and make sure that Antonio Brown is active and that you keep an eye out to make sure that. You know, there could be a report that says Antonio Brown's only going to play 15 to 20 snaps, something like that. So if, if there's anything that comes out that's negative on AB, then you can't trust him. Hey, I forgot. It, I, it, I, I'm sorry, Dave. I forgot. I also have his cousin in as well. Yeah, sure. So you can start him over his cousin and okay. you can start him over Cooper Cup, but it's all contingent on the reports being positive or non existent mm-hmm. Sunday morning. Okay. Who are some of your favorite plays for week two that might just hit everybody across the board? Well, I'll start a quarterback, and I think Dak Prescott's for real. I really liked what I saw from that offense last week. I think he'll continue to do it, and he's already being started in 60% of fantasy leagues. So I think that that's almost a no-brainer at this point. A lot of interesting streaming quarterbacks this week, from Stafford to Josh Allen to Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I think all three of those guys have a chance to put up 250 yards and a couple of touchdowns. A running back that I'm encouraged by, I, I don't necessarily want to rush him into my starting lineup, but it really depends who else I have, is Devin Singletary with the Buffalo Bills. Didn't get a lot of work last week, but with the touches he did have, every carry he had went for double-digit yards. He had four catches on top of it. I'm I'm optimistic that the Bills will find ways to give him more work, more touches, and maybe he ends up with a really nice game against the Giants. It would be taking a chance to use him, but I think he's got some potential this week uh, to be to be strong in the fantasy. Tyrell Williams, I think everybody's going to stick with him after what they saw last week. He's now the number one receiver for the Raiders. John Brown was awesome last week for the Bills. I think he keeps it up in that same game against the Giants. Deshaun Jackson, I think he keeps up his good numbers against Atlanta. He was the leader in targets, catches, yards, and he had two touchdowns last week for Philadelphia, so I really think that the Eagles want to get Deshaun Jackson going quite a bit more. Of course, TJ Hawkinson and Darren Waller, Mark Andrews, all the guys that were hot last week, keep them going in your lineup this week. And uh, and, and that's really about it. I think, I think if you can find the Colts or Titans DSTs on your waiver wire, and you want an option to go with ahead of Jacksonville, you might have drafted Jacksonville to be your, your top dog DST, uh, you can make the switch to one of those two defenses. I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of feeling the Colts as a sleeper DST. Dave Richard with us. Dave, speaking of <laughs> players that are extremely frustrating over the years, so you know I, I I've got to have uh, I've either got to have Dalvin Cook or Devontae Freeman for obvious reasons on my fantasy teams each and every year. And, and, yep, because you're a homer. Uh, that, you're, <laughs> you're damn right. And and the thing with Freeman though. You know, okay, well, Tevin Coleman's on the Niners now. Great, all right. Freeman's gonna get all kinds of touches and be awesome. And what does he do? He lays an egg in the first uh, in the first game. How do you see him? I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm guessing he's at the very least a flex or an RB two. But really, how do you see him going throughout the season if he's healthy? Well, I I think he's an RB two for now. I'm worried about him staying healthy for the course of the season. I could say the same thing about Dalvin Cook, but Cook just looks so good right now. And the Vikings are absolutely committed to giving him the ball a lot. So 
you, you you certainly ride him if you got him, and hopefully that's the seminal running back that you drafted of the two. But Freeman, a little bit older, and not necessarily getting every single touch. And last week was really, honestly, was the toughest matchup that the Falcons are going to face this year. I am a little worried about the health of that offensive line. They just lost their best rookie interior lineman last week. He's gone for the foreseeable future. And this matchup against Philly on, on Sunday night, it's, it's going to be high scoring. There's going to be a lot of passes thrown. I don't know if it means amazing things for Devontae Freeman, but you do have to stick with him in your lineup and certainly expect him to get more touches than he got last week. Um, he might get more than twice as many, and then that would end up being probably pretty good for his stat line. Should be good for a minimum of 80 total yards with a decent chance to score. Dave, do you expect uh, Josh Jacobs' stat line to be similar to what we saw in his debut? I don't know about two touchdowns similar but yeah against kansas city I, I don't know what to make of that defense i don't think that they're necessarily dominant against the run just because they held leonard fournette to under 100 total yards in week one i think jacobs is going to continue to get a ton of work in, in in the offense we don't know exactly what his role will be if the raiders are chasing points so if they're down two scores in the second half is jacobs going to be the one on the field is it going to be jalen richard i think that it could still be a mix of the two of them and on top of that you've got the whole first half with Jacobs trying to set the tone uh, honestly the Raiders should lean on Jacobs because if he can break some carries that gives them time of possession in their favor it keeps the Chiefs offense off the field Jacobs is, is a guy that you're going to start as a number two running back I do like him better than Devontae Freeman this week Dave Richard with us so yeah running backs we keep going down the gamut just saw uh, you probably caught this right before you came on, Joe Mixon going through walkthroughs, San Francisco yeah, yeah. in that defense. So uh, what your thoughts on him as a starter this week, and, and, and do you have to be extremely careful with that? You, you do have to be careful, and we'll find out what the injury designation is. I'm sure he'll be limited in practice and listed as questionable, and we're going to have to take it up till Sunday morning to find out whether or not he plays. And if he does, it spoils the value of Giovanni Bernard, who a lot of people picked up off waivers yep. this week. You know, Gio would have been a very good number two fantasy running back had Joe Mixon not practiced all week and then not played in the game, and he still could be. If Joe Mixon doesn't play, then Gio is certainly going to be the guy. I almost wonder if the, if the Bengals try and use both running backs a little bit evenly, and it hurts the upside for Joe Mixon, and it absolutely wrecks the value of Giovanni Bernard. You almost want to say stay away from them, but 49ers run defense, I, I don't know how good it is. Ronald Jones looked great against them last week. Peyton Barber averaged four yards a carry. I think that there's there, there are going to be chances here for the Bengals runners to do well against them. I'm just not sure which one it'll be. My guess is that if Mixon plays, he'll be the one that everybody will lean towards starting. Dave, not everybody played, I, I don't think, played Lamar Jackson last week, but he was amazing. Did we miss his best week, or do you expect more of that? Well, I think I don't think he's going to throw five touchdowns in a game again, maybe in his career. Um, it was just an incredible matchup against the Dolphins defense that couldn't touch him. He was well protected. The Dolphins' pass rush is laughable. And you know, anytime you can't put pressure on a quarterback and you give him all day to throw, he's going to pick you apart, even Lamar Jackson. So well, let's see what he looks like this week. I still think he has three touchdown potential against Arizona, but they've got pass rushers, and they can definitely make things a little bit harder on Lamar Jackson. Call it 240 yards and three touchdowns total. Maybe he runs a little bit more. Could be a high-scoring game between these two teams. I think the Ravens will hold up their end of the bargain. Not sure about the Cardinals. Really comes down to how healthy that Ravens defense is. Fantasy football in full swing all day Sunday. And Dave Richard and co. Dave Richard and friends have mm -hmm. you covered top to bottom. If I wanted to read you, if I wanted to hear you, if I wanted to, I don't know, I guess see you. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't know if you want to see me, but if you want some good fantasy advice, uh, an hour from now, Fantasy Football Today kicks off live noon Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific on CBS Sports HQ. We're going to go deep into daily fantasy, all the good buys and bad buys that we like. So if you're into DFS, you should tune in. And we're going to react to what happened on Thursday night. We've got a game plan for what to do with Cam Newton, and we'll share it with you, what to do with O.J. Howard. So if you're, if you're looking to get an edge on the rest of your league, maybe come up with a win in Week 2. Join us, 9 a.m. Pacific time, on CBSSportsHQ.com or on the free CBS Sports app. You just download that thing right now. It doesn't cost you a dime, and you can watch us right there on your phone or your tablet or you know whatever you're using that has Wi-Fi. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Dave, uh, best of luck this week. Thank you, as always, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. You got it, gentlemen. Good luck in your leagues. The Drive.